the hard part about early on in a season with a rookie quarterback, a new offense, a new offensive coordinator, new coaches, he is being level-headed enough to be able to understand what's happening with the team. Now, we said right from the get-go that it would take three, four weeks. Matt Eberflus has res resonated those sentiments and said it takes time for these things to gel. But when you see the offensive line playing as poorly as they played last night, it's hard to comprehend what's going through the mind of these coaches. Luke Getze was run out of town the end of last year for his part in the offensive play calling debacle that we had in Chicago, and rightfully so. But then last night, the Raiders, with their defense that's very similar to the Bears' defense that can hold a game in check, held the Ravens to 23 points. And the offense put up over 300 yards to lead the Raiders to a 26-23 victory over the Ravens. Meanwhile, the Bears, for the second straight week in a row, struggled time and time again to get the offense rolling. Who's to blame? If you guys remember, in the offseason, offensive coordinator was the big move that the Bears wanted to make. They retained uh, running back coach and offensive line coach Chris Morgan brought a new running back coach in, but Chris Morgan to be able to solidify the offensive line and keep it going. The biggest reason they did that was because since he took over in Chicago, the Bears have been top ranked in the league in the rushing department. In 2022, they led the league with 5.4 yards per carry and 3,000 total rushing yards. In 2023, the Bears were sixth in the league at 4.5 yards per carry and 2399 rushing yards, just shy of 2400. Well, this year, 2024, the Bears are fourth to last in the league through two games, it's only two games, at 3.5 yards per carry, 155 yards through two games. It's a vast difference from years prior. And you can say it's because of Justin Fields, but the reality is last night, Caleb Williams was also the Bears' leading rusher with five carries for 44 yards, an average of 8.8 .8 yards per carry. The rest of the team combined for 27 yards on 17 carries, a yard and a half per carry. If you can't establish the running game and get it going, teams will tee off on the Bears and create pressure like no other. And that's exactly what they did last night. You see the, the tweet from Chase Daniel. He said the Texans had 36 pressures on Caleb Williams tonight, according to Next Gen Stats, on 42 pass attempts. He was a little erroneous on his tweet. It kind of went viral, but then Next Gen Stats corrected him below. We have it as 23 team pressures on 48 dropbacks. There are 36 total individual pressures by 10 different pass rushers. Several were on the same play. Still not good. If you look at the top right there, in 2022, the Bears O-line pass blocking efficiency ranked 29th in the league. Justin Fields was under pressure on 45.7% of plays. In 2023, Bears O-line pass block efficiency ranked 26th. Justin Fields was under pressure on 48.8% of plays. Last night, it was glaringly obvious how terrible the Bears pass rush efficiency was, pass block efficiency was. The line could not establish a presence at all, and it started because they couldn't get the run game going. Is that Shane Waldron's fault? Is that Chris Morgan's fault? I don't know. But last night, the Bears O line, Caleb Williams, was under pressure on 47.9% of plays. To give you a stark difference of how that exists against the rest of the league, the rest of the league is in the low 30s. That's how much pressure the rest of the league allows on their quarterback. Low 30s. We had an opportunity to hire Eric Bieniemy, and now he ended up going to be an associate coach, head coach, a different role with UCLA. He said he wanted to work with youth. It was because it really is because he didn't get a head coaching offer. Shane Waldron was the most sought after offensive coordinator in the league last year. Ellen Moore, Clint Kubiak, Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson stayed with the Detroit Lions. But look what Clint Kubiak is doing with the New Orleans Saints. They've put up a league-high 91 points through two games, and it wasn't just against Scrubs. You can say that from week one, but this last week, they put a shellacking on the Dallas Cowboys, who were considered to have one of the best defenses in the league. Yeah. They put up 44 points on the Cowboys' defense. Maybe Clint Kubiak knows what he's doing. 
So you might take this video and you might say, it's way too early to panic. And I agree. I've been preaching that. You need four weeks to get a true scope of things. With the players. With the players, that's what you need. With Caleb Williams, you can't gauge him until you see a full four, six, eight weeks worth of work. He's a rookie quarterback. They take time to develop. With Romo Dunze, with your linemen, with different if your coaches, you can see the play calling, you can see the schemes right off the bat, and it's ugly. It's glaringly obvious they're using DeAndre Swift wrong. They're not using Khalil Herbert right. It was a huge mistake to let David Montgomery go. It was a huge mistake to go after DeAndre Swift and not go after Saquon Barkley or a power back or a Derrick Henry. We mocked that all through the offseason that we needed a power back that we needed a Derrick Henry or a Saquon Barkley. And we went and got DeAndre Swift, who is clearly ineffective, with Shane Waldron and this offense trying to get a running game going. We've got options. We don't have the right options or the right schemes being called. If you were with me last night for the live broadcast of the game, you know I'm passionate about this team. I love this team. I want this team to succeed. I am convinced Matt Eberflus is the right coach for this team. He's done a heck of a job. He held the Houston Texans to under 20 points. That was one of the keys of the game that I had for this game. We needed to hold the Texans to under 20 points. The offense didn't do their job. The offense didn't do their job in week one. It was the defense that scored in week one. The offense has done absolutely nothing. Now, granted, Keenan Allen dropped a touchdown pass in the first game. Romo Dunze dropped a touchdown pass in the second game. The offensive line is not creating holes, opening things up, or play calls are not being schemed properly for the line to be able to open up for the running backs to get the running game going. We can't do it with barely three yards per carry. We can't open it up. We can't have these third down and longs constantly over and over and over again and expect teams not to tee off on Caleb Williams and create pass rush pressure on half of every play that he drops back. He can't survive as a rookie trying to make it in this league. In the first half of the game, he did better than the second half of the game. In the first half, he was getting a flow. He was getting a rhythm going. And a few little things here or there picked up it. Like Romo Dunze dropping the touchdown. Little things. But the pressure became so intense in that second half that Caleb couldn't get a flow going and you can't get rhythm. Something has to change. And I absolutely believe that man right there, Shane Waldron with his back turn, is on the same path as Luke Getzey right now. And if he doesn't turn it around, he and Chris Morgan need to be on a very short leash. You can't have the fourth lowest running game in the league with the Bears and expect a rookie quarterback to survive. So the Bears may have made a huge, colossal mistake in the hires that they've done. You've got a great defensive-minded head coach. He brought in an amazing defensive line coordinator. With Eric Washington, I am not convinced this offensive line or coaches are the right path for this team, and I want them on a short leash.